Today on Lockdown Red Wings, Detroit falls in Washington 3-2, to two, but it was a very young squad that showed flashes of brilliance. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I am a podcast producer for WWJ News Radio 950. Well, Scotty is the host of Locked On Tigers at their final game today. Uh, finished with a record of 66 and 96. I saw your tweet. I saw your tweet. Uh, and a freelance journalist <laughs> for the Detroit News. Uh, second best record since 2016. And that's not a compliment. No, it's actually really funny for those of, for those who, and a couple of people have pointed it out already, but... For those who who uh, listen to Locked On Tigers every day, I actually said, I like thought of that mid recording yesterday, and I literally said, "No one steal that tweet." I'm taking it after tomorrow's <laughs> game, like on air, and then I followed through with it and did it. So, but yeah, no, I, I still got to record that show after this season end. Uh, big, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of season stuff and to talk about final game, and then obviously looking ahead at the. I'm pretty excited about the off season, so. Well, and thankfully uh, for you, Tiger season may be over, but you're rolling right into the Red Wings regular season. Yes, they, very cool. Detroit played their, what was this, their sixth, I believe, preseason game as they finish up on Friday, Saturday, back-to-backs, home at yeah. Toronto, home if against Toronto. If you just did that off the dome, I'm very impressed with you to just pull six out. If that's right, that's like really impressive. I'm pretty sure. There's no way I could think that quickly well, and just be like, one of the six, yeah. The reason why I know that is because they're playing two games against four different teams. And they've played two against Washington. Right. They've played two oh. against Pittsburgh. Okay. And now they've also played uh, two against Now that you explained Chicago. it, I'm not impressed anymore. So oh, congratulations. Well, I should <laughs> crap. Should have taken it when I had it. But yeah, the Red Wings lost 3-2 to two against Washington Capitals. Uh, they did a little shootout afterwards. Um, but, you know, I watched this game. and I, I had a lot of similar feelings that I had against the Pittsburgh Penguins the other night. And now, obviously, this is a different lineup a much different lineup much younger lineup mostly with the exception of like Bertuzzi pretty much all of your you know fringe NHLers and soon to be NHLers your prospects and you know guys you signed to like camp invites stuff like that and yet they played Washington Capitals pretty good in fact I think the total shots were about like one off I believe the Capitals had 34 shots on Huso, while we the Red Wings had 33 on Kemper. So yeah, it was a one shot differential, despite the fact that the Capitals skated out there a much more experienced lineup in Alex Ovechkin, TJ Oshie, Evgeny Kuznetsov was out there. Uh, same with Dylan Strom, John Carlson. So yeah, it was a much deeper lineup for the Washington Capitals' sake. And the Red Wings played them hard, despite the fact that, like I said, outside Bertuzzi. there was mostly young guys. So I, I come away from this game like, yeah, they lost again. They've so far only have two wins, I believe, in the preseason here, but they played hard, and that's and there are certain players and certain times where they looked good. And when you're playing the preseason, that's kind of what you're looking for, you know. You're looking for what players stand out, which players look like they're closer to the next step than others. And you know, so I think there were several guys who did do that. Yeah, I I, I don't care about win losses in preseason, and and neither should you, and neither should anyone. I, I right, I, I think that. The preseason, exactly what you said, is to evaluate players and evaluate lines and evaluate pairings and evaluate play calls and evaluate special teams units and eva- like it's it's all about evaluating what you have and trying new things and trying you know seeing if if you throw something at a wall and seeing if it sticks like it's it's all about evaluation and seeing if stuff works it it, it does not winning and losing does not matter. No, I completely agree. Um, and I, I think the guy who stood out the most to me in this game was uh, Pontus Andreasen. Uh, and yeah. In fact, his entire line, Pontus Andreasen, Elmer Soderblom, and Ma- Matt Luff. And I, I've noticed this before, but Matt Luff has looked good a couple times. Matt Luff is... Yeah, he's looked nice, man. He's looked Which real is nice, Matt surprising, because when the Red Wings made that addition in the offseason, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, just a depth guy. But he's Yeah, I think that's what we said. We were like, you know, depth depth signing. And yeah, he's looked he's looked nice. So that line, uh, that line analytically as well was their best line, but just not even getting into that. I, watching the eye test, Pontus Andreasen, who we've talked about in the past, was 
Uh, along with Simon Evanson was rookie of the year finalist over in the SHL. That's why the Red Wings took a flyer on him and uh, signed him to a, a one-year contract and uh, or entry-level contract rather. And he's he looked good in this game. I thought he looked very creative in the offensive zone. His stick handling is something that really stuck out to me and his vision as well. He and Elmer Soderblom fed off each other very nicely. Uh, the, Soderblom himself also looked very good. I think there was one time where I was like, that was a bad turnover. But yeah. I remember one specific instance in the first period where Elmer Soderblom was breaking up the wing. He came under pressure by, I think, two different capitals along the boards. They pinned him up against the boards, and he stick-handled his way out of it. They picked this pocket. They started going back the other way. But, you know, because he's six foot eight and has like a 10-foot-long hockey stick, just reached forward and grabbed it back. Caught, I believe it was. If I, I could be mistaken, I could be misremembering, but I believe it was Pontus Andreessen breaking down the middle and just kind of tapped that pass to him. So he breaking up the wing, fought off two different guys, lost control, regained control, gave it to Pontus Andreessen, who broke it and got a shot off on net. So I mean, that kind of I wouldn't even say creativity, but I mean, it just is is further like what sort of hammering home how valuable his size is with his hands. And that's yeah. something we've really talked about along the way with Simon or not Simon Evans, Elmer Soderblom is that his hands for his size are incredibly unique. Uh, and it, it's just, it's such a great combination because he's going to be a threat, not just offensively, but defensively as well, because you're not, he's not going to have to like, he has an inherent advantage just by his size, I guess is the way I should sum that up, you know? Yeah, intangible, right? Like you can't you can't teach just being huge. <laughs> like you can't. Yeah. Like that's just something that like you either have or you don't, I guess. And um, yeah, his I mean, we talk about his tools all the time. And yeah, I absolutely agree. I think I think he stood out in this one. I, I wanna get, unless there's anything else you want to get on on those two dudes, I want to talk about um Edvinson in this one. I did want to say one more thing um, about them, and that's, yeah, yeah. you know, I kind of hinted at it, but they were obviously the most dominant line for the Red Wings out there. I think as a line, they had a goals four percentage of like 80%. And that's this isn't a game where the Red, Wing, Red Wings really dominated in the first half of the game, and then the second half of the game, the Washington Capitals kind of took over. So for that line who played, you know, uh, the least amount of minutes in this game, just eight minutes and 54 seconds for them to put up that kind of performance was really impressive for a line full of just young guys and what people would consider a fringe NHLer, so right. I, I really like them. But yes, go ahead with Simon Evanson. No, I mean I, I just wanted to kind of I don't know start a or continue conversations that we've been having about him for weeks now. I I, I thought that this game pretty perfectly like depicted what his like camp and preseason has been so far. I think that really. This entire, like I said, this entire preseason at camp has just been a lot of you see flashes of oh my goodness, like that's again we talk about intangible stuff. We we talk about just tools, like the tools that he have and the and has and the ability that he has to do certain things on the ice are are things that uh, a lot of veterans can't do. Nonetheless, kids that are whatever nineteen years old, like he is, he, he is unreal, and and we see a lot of glimpses of that, and we see a lot of flashes of brilliance. And then we also see like the opposite end and we see pretty big flashes of, um, I don't know, I, not like too dramatic of like a negative, like at the end of the day, it's still preseason, but well, you, you see flashes of uh, lack of experience and, and you see like mistakes and, and you see pretty blatant or at times pretty bad mistakes too. Um, but it, it's, it's that's what it's been. That's what this game was, I thought. And that's what this entire experience so far in the preseason has really been has just been him like pretty dramatically like swinging just from from side to side of like, oh, my goodness, that was amazing. I can't wait. Like his ceiling is so high, all objectively true. And then a lot of just like growing pains, I guess, is the way to call them. And it's not not a single thing I have seen. And I think that this is like a connotation that comes with like criticizing young players is like, oh, well, you know, I, I don't think that none of this has changed my opinion of him going forward. Like it's I'm talking about my opinion of him making the team in, in you know, 14 days, not not um, well, you know, whatever, what, less than that, I guess now, not what I think his career trajectory is like changing because of preseason games at 19 years old. Like that's, 
That's yeah. We're talking about sh- right now if he's going to make this team, right? And you shouldn't do that either. But I, yeah, I, I think that we've seen a lot, and I thought this game really, per- like I said, really, like in sixty minutes, you kind of saw everything. You kind of experienced everything. There were some really positive positives that I, I'm really excited about. And uh, then there are some some plays where you go, OK, well, like that's a 19 year old playing on North American ice for the first time. Yeah, I, I want to respond to that because I agree a lot with what you said. Uh, but first, I got to talk to the people about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to BetOnline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. And yeah, so Simon Edvinson. I agree with you that this was pretty much the perfect summarization of his preseason so far with the high highs and the mental gaffes because for the most part, he looked solid. But then there are moments like when the Washington Capitals scored their one and only power play goal in this game. They had two power play opportunities in this game, and they scored on one of them. They, the other, they had a sudden a delayed penalty they scored on too, but that's you know not technically a power play. But back to my point before I get off on a tangent, the McMichaels goal. On the power play, Alex Ovechkin was on the left point, and McMichaels was off to the right side of the net if you are facing the net. If you're facing the net, he's off to the right side. That is the side that Edvinson was playing. Edvinson, being a left-handed defenseman, was off on that side of the net, and Edvinson didn't have him covered. He was standing free and clear with no interference. Now, in Edvinson's defense, that puck started off on his side of the ice, and when you're playing defense and you're on a penalty kill, when the puck is on your side of the defensive zone, you break off of the net and kind of take it's it's forming the box is what they call it. You don't go all the way to the boards, but you don't stay in front of the net because you want to take up as many passing lanes as possible. Your defensive partner slides over and takes whomever is in front of the net. But that puck found its way back across to Alex Ovechkin on the opposite point. At that point, Edmondson is supposed to slide back and cover his man in front. He did not do that. He got caught still in the circle and McMichaels easily just redirected that puck home and a, and a shot pass from Alex Ovechkin. That's a huge mental gaffe on Simon Edvinson's part. And it's very easy for me as a bystander, as a viewer to pick that apart. But that's something that Simon Edvinson as a 19 year old is going to have to learn to not allow to happen if he wants to make it as an everyday NHLer. But like I, like you were saying, Scotty, it doesn't change my opinion on his highs and his lows. You know, it doesn't change my opinion on his ceilings and what he can be because you know what he looks like to me is he looks like a 19 year old with is playing on NHL ice for the first time on North American ice for the first time with the exception of a couple world junior tournaments. So he just looks inexperienced and we've, yeah. we've hammered this home so many times, so many multiple of times before that, don't let what Mort Sider did when he came into the league last year with an extra year of experience, mind you, warp your expectations for what Simon Edvinson should be. This is what a 19-year-old evolving into an NHLer looks like. They make big mistakes, and that's how they learn from them. But if in the meantime you can see that ceiling and they can play consistently the rest of the time, which I do believe Simon Edvinson played pretty consistently the rest of the time, if you can, if they look pretty dang good the rest of the time, that's what you should focus on because those mistakes, that big mistake he made on the penalty kill, that's going to get taught out of him. He just looks like a 19 year old. So that's why I'm just, I'm not worried about it. I just really want Red Wings fans to understand that. And they probably do for the most part. No one's hitting the panic alarm yet on Simon Edison, but that's just what a 19 year old looks like. Right. And that, that's the point I was trying to, to, to drive home. If I didn't make that clear, like that's that I, I don't even view it as a negative. Like, I I don't even, like, when he is, you know, makes a mistake and you look and you go, okay, like, he could have done that better. The spacing was bad on that or whatever. That, like, I I don't even, on October 5th in in his first preseason, like, on North American, like, I I don't view that as, as even, geez, bless you. That was aggressive, dog. That was a violent Again, I mute the microphone. (laughs) 
Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but people that are watching on YouTube just saw you dab like Cam Newton in 2015. Could, that was crazy. You couldn't have let them believe um, I was just dabbing. <laughs> Okay, I, I, no, but that that's really what I want to drive home is like I don't even want it to come across as a negative. Like that is just what he is. Like that's not everyone is a like super prospect that's just gonna come yeah. over and immediately be unbelievable. Like, like this is just right. This is just like normal. This is like I I think I don't want it to come across as me over like an, not over analyzing because that's like what we should be doing but being like maybe too nitpicky or whatnot i just want it to be like no that like that he did objectively that was not the right play there but that's kind of expected and that's just a growing pain and hopefully he doesn't do it again now that it's happened to him once like that's that's just how prospects are so like i i think there's a fine line we can walk here of you know the, the sky is not falling. It's not a huge negative yeah. thing. He doesn't look terrible. And like the, the intangibles are all there. When you watch, he makes fantastic plays too. So I, I think we can walk that fine line. And I think just the next conversation after that is, you know, would you rather him play in 24 minutes in Grand Rapids or kind of in a bubble on the third line and in, in the NHL start off I mean, uh, the regular season? this year? That's the debate. I, I, because even like third pair of minutes in the NHL is actually valuable minutes for a defenseman. You're not getting sure. like there's no pairing on a defenseman on, on a defensive core where you're getting buried, so to speak. As Correct. long as he's not a healthy scratch, nine, ten minutes a night on the third pair is still valuable minutes as an NHL defenseman, especially starting out. So then that could be, and we talked about this yesterday, is I don't necessarily think that he is 100% NHL ready because of those mistakes, because of the fact that he's only 19 years old. But his competition yep. seems to be so weak at this point. That he could still make the team Which, as the again, best is viable huge, option. Like, where the team stands right now is a huge factor in this decision. Like, you're, we're, we're, the rebuild thing is kind of over. We're trying to win, and if he's the best third line or third pair defenseman, then like, there you go. That's yeah. that's gonna be he's gonna get picked. Um, I agree. And there are a couple other players, too, that I want to talk about. Bertuzzi obviously looked good in this game. I, I don't think there's a lot to break down with Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi looked like Bertuzzi. He had a goal and an assist in this game. Uh, I mean, he just banked home a rebound, second rebound, really, in front of the yeah. net on the power he, he play. Looks, yeah, he looks just as, you know, grimy style of play as, as he always does. And, I, I yeah, I love it. I, I can't I, wait. You know, the fact that he was um, – I thought he was pretty aggressive and physical for a preseason game. And so, um, yeah, I'm pumped for the regular season. Pumped for uh, what he – what he's going to do after, you know, a 30 goal season. I think that's pretty enticing. I, and he wore an A for the Red Wings too, which makes sense given that he's, I believe the most tenured Red Wing that played in this game. I mean, the yep. only reason he played in this game is because he missed games due to injury. Just, yeah. Um, and I mean, he just, he looked like Tyler Bertuzzi. I thought the power play, that power play that they played on the Red Wings had four opportunities, only scored on one, but that first one they had looked good. Pos passing was really good. Uh, vision was really good. I was, I was happy with how that turned out, but the rest of them, they did not score on, really struggled to really set anything up on. Uh, let's see here. Vili Huso, the goaltender tonight, uh, looked really, really good until that very last goal. And yeah. I, I have a hard time. That was a bad goal that Huso gave up. He, he's going to sure. want that one back for sure. But it was another opportunity, another situation where everyone was puck watching and the guy was literally in the best spot available in the slot. And I sneeze, by the way, Scott. <laughs> uh, I was waiting. I was waiting. I was like, man, is he really not going to say anything right now? It's crazy. Nice sneeze. Yeah. But <laughs> it, it wasn't his fault that that guy was wide open in the slot in the crease with nobody covering him. But that was also just a really weak shot that he let squeeze by him. Yeah. But outside of that goal, the game winner, he looked solid. I mean, they had over 30 shots on net in this game. So his save percentage was over 90, which is exactly where you want your goaltender to be to give you a chance yep. to win. So, and Darcy Kemper, for all intents and purposes, he looked really good for the Washington Capitals. Red Wings also had 33 shots on oh, net. Yeah, the Red Wings, that was what this game was. It, it was really not a game of established zone presences. I noticed it was a lot of scoring changes off the rush, which I've also noticed for the Red Wings has kind of been the MO throughout the preseason. They have never, there, there have been a few occasions yeah, just, where they establish offensive pressure, but man, are they good at getting out chances off the rush? Yeah. Well, I, I think that they are just really driving home like aggressive 
AF zone entry. Like, I think that that's yeah. just like really the point that they're driving home. So and it's been good. whether that is like off the rush or on a, on a fast break or on a one man break or whatnot, or whether it's just like both teams are almost entirely in the neutral zone and we're just going to say, screw it. And, and just, you know, make, make it kind of look like a rush. Like, I think that that's really the point I'm interested to see. It, that's that's an intriguing thing for me if that's going to stick around once the regular season starts because the, the zone entry has been unbelievably aggressive and given what we've had to deal with for the last four years I, I think I'm I'm pretty pretty pumped about that so yeah uh, when we come back we're going to finish up this conversation recapping the three two loss against the Washington Capitals I want to talk about Philip Zadina I want to talk a little bit about Michael Rasmussen as well as Jonathan Berggren and then finish up talking about the broadcast in general because man I'm grateful we can stream them but lord above I can't take it anymore I just can't uh when we come back segment three lockdown red wings podcast uh let's talk about Zadina I thought he looked fine in this game he didn't really do anything to really stand out to me but he didn't look bad either he played on the line with Joe Valeno and Dominic Kubalik and that line continues to really Joe Valeno in general as a center has kind of continued to, to impress me uh, as a whole. They, they had the most time on the ice in this game. They were your like line number one, so to speak. And Joe Valeno or Phil Zidane and Dominic Kubelik have good chemistry. Joe Valeno as center is pretty dang good uh, between those two. But Phil Zidane wore an A for the Detroit Red Wings in this game. And I thought that was intriguing to a point where... I mean, I understand that he got like part of me is torn. Like, is he did he get an A because he's like a locker room leader, or did he get an A because he's one of the most tenured guys on the team right now? But if that's the case, like they could have given it to Michael Rasmussen as well. But at the same vein, it's just preseason, so who cares? But I thought it was cool that he got a letter at all because I think that proves that while Red Wings fans are a little bit more split on him, that the locker room seems to respect him. Because I don't think, even though it's just a preseason letter, Scotty. You don't just give those out necessarily willy nilly. You give them out to the, no, the, the guys who right. deserve it most in the group that's going out there. Correct. Yeah, I think that's I, that last point is I think what it is, and like not even necessarily deserved, but just look at like the NHL service time of like everybody out there besides Burt. Like, <laughs> like yeah. he he was what he's like, <laughs> you know, whatever he is, twenty two, twenty three, and he's already like was one of the, one of, if not the most experienced NHL experience, like NHL ice time dude on the ice tonight. So like, yeah, I, I thought it was uh, like cool to see for sure. But I also think probably not a very difficult conversation or, or uh debate either, you know, going in with those, with that, yeah, that personal group it, tonight. It's certainly not a deep conversation and I will yeah. not argue that whatsoever. I just thought it was neat. Basically yeah. is. It no, was, I mean, it's it's cool to see him have an A on his jersey, like uh, yeah. optically. Like, that's just a cool thing to see, for Even sure. Even though I don't like them back above the tip, I get that that's an iconic look, but it looks so cramped, and it made so much more sense on the other side where there's more space, but we don't have to get into that. Dude. You're just so high maintenance. I am. I, I'm <laughs> like, I am becoming a hockey boomer. Like, absolutely <laughs> am. It's, no, no, I, I actually, I, I know you, you made that comment with... Um, the ads too. I don't think that that's like, uh, I, I think I'm, the, I'm in the minority when it comes to like the ad opinion. I think you're spot on with a, a majority of, of people, no matter what. So, yeah, but um, the letter above the tip thing, I don't know like the pulse of like, who's really a big fan of that. 50, and who's 50, not. From what I understand. I'm like, I'm, I, I love it. I think it's cool yeah. just because I'm uh old hat. I, I like the, well, that's, the that's original. the split. People look, who there's people who prefer the iconic look and there's people who prefer the aesthetic look, right? Of because course. aesthetically speaking, it just looks better over here because sure. here it's like halfway up onto the shoulder. Like it literally pa passes the seam onto the, where a sure. shoulder patch would be, but I get that that's the iconic look. So I won't discount that, but that we're, again, we're getting into a conversation. We don't have to have well, yeah. I mean, we and a couple days ago. This conversation also changes, you know, completely changes tune if it, they moved it to put an ad over there. So, yeah. Um, the other two forward lines, you might as well just wrap up the forward lines. Michael Rasmussen, Jonathan Berger, and Tyler Bertuzzi looked great. I think Jonathan Berger's really driving, him and Elmer Soderblom are really driving cases to make the NHL. And it's going to be really hard. I tweeted this out earlier, but like when they make their cuts, I have a gut, I just, 
I have an unfortunate gut feeling that Soderblom and Bergen won't make the team just solely, not solely, that's not fair because we know what kind of roster this is this year. It's most deserving player. But I just have this gut feeling that because they're so young, they're going to opt to start them in the AHL then maybe call them up later. When I feel like, especially Bergeron, I feel like Bergeron is a very complete package right now. Way like Soderblom is really good, but still a little raw. But Bergeron is just such a complete package. I want to see that man on the wing. And that line performed really well. Michael Rasmussen had a rocket of a shot for a goal. He was crunching guys out there. And like, even if he doesn't make it as a center, he's becoming a dang good wing. Like it took us several years to get him there, but end of last season, he looked good all throughout the preseason. He's looked good. That line was the best line for the Red Wings next to the Pontus Andreas in line. Those two lines were both well above 50% expected goal. All your offense came from those two lines basically. But on the other hand, your worst line by a metric mile was Austin Zarnick, Giovanni Smith, and Taro Hirose, which you could probably have predicted. They had an expected goals four percentage as a line of twelve percent, Scotty. Yeah, I mean, I, as a, as a Giovanni Smith truther, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm worried about his uh, his roster spot on the team. I think that that's uh, that's going to be a pretty tough conversation. I, I think as we get, I, I also think this is the Thursday episode. I think this weekend is like sizable round of cuts coming our way. Oh yeah, I'm pretty, the- I'm pretty confident in that. The final game is on Saturday, I believe. And so yeah. they're going to have a week to make cuts. But I think this weekend, like, you're going to see cuts almost immediately. And I, I think, I mean, yeah, I, you're going to you're gonna shave it down this weekend and then throughout the week maybe some. But I think you're going to see, like, a big a big round pretty pretty quickly here. Well, you think about it. Giovanni Smith, cutting Giovanni Smith, it just I, – I don't want to say it because, like, we like Giovanni Smith because we have a bias towards him, but we also are realistic and understand – his value. And I think that he's definitely getting outperformed, especially in this game by his team teammates that are up and coming. And even some of the other, you know, depth pieces that they've signed that might not necessarily even make the NHL. Like Matt Luff, for instance, who we've talked about has been playing good all preseason. So I'm, I'm starting to really get worried about his place too. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We won't know. There's a lot. There's honestly, there's, there's a, a solid amount of fringe dudes that are, and we talked about it a little bit yesterday, man. That's a sign of a good team. Like there, there should be players that, and I'm not saying, you know, you're, you're sending to Grand Rapids or cutting like a, like a heart candidate. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to hype any of these dudes up to be something they're not, but at the same time, this is the first time that you really look around, you go, Oh, like there are some dudes that I would like to be in the NHL that are not going to make the NHL roster this year because we have more depth than we've had in years. And that's a good thing. You know, it, it makes, it makes cut day a lot harder, but that that's a good problem to have. So you, so you said something there that were, this is completely unplanned. I forgot, I forgot to even tell you this. I don't know if you saw it. No, I think you retweeted it actually from the Red Wings account. The, uh, Oh yeah, I the did. power rankings. Can we going, talk yeah. about that for a second? Yeah, we got disrespected. The, as I was going to talk about the broadcast. That. that was so. All the hosts had to vote on the power rankings for the NHL season coming up. The initial power rankings. Everyone does this for every league everywhere. But this is where the re- our our co-hosts, our other our fellow hosts, our coworkers, our, our, our friends co-workers. and family. <laughs> This is where, yeah, hold on a second. That was, I want to get the tab itself. This is where they had the Red Wings ranked in their power rankings. Disrespectful. That's 22 for those who are not watching on YouTube. 22nd of 32. They have the Red Wings in the bottom, well, I guess that's bottom 11 technically, yeah. I just, I, I that is tough. I mean, and the fact that the senators are all the way up there at 15, and I know the senators took made some big moves this offseason to get a lot better. Well, uh, we're the course. ones that keep getting compared as the sends and wings, yeah. sends and wings. And yeah, they're eight spots above us. I mean, I, I wouldn't say like top, I wouldn't even say the Red Wings were 15th. I'm not that insane, but top 20 at least in terms of how much better that they've gotten. Like Columbus? Really? Tough. Columbus? You bring in Johnny Goudreau and you're just you like... You think that just solves all your problems? You're a top 19 team just because you bring in Johnny Goudreau? And the Islanders had a really down year last year, so I am really... And they're getting a new head coach, although he was the assistant coach, so it's really interesting to see what they're going to do. 
I, I'm not sold on the stars. I mean, Jason Robinson. Robertson Honestly, the thing that makes me the most upset is just we're only one ahead of the Devils. I mean, the Devils have some really good young pieces. Yeah, but like, no. Like, we're, we're <laughs> not one spot better than the New Jersey Devils. That's disrespectful. Well, look at the Kraken. I'm surprised the Kraken are that low. I think a lot of people are judging uh, the Kraken's power ranking based on where they finished last year. But they have some but not, I mean, obviously they got Shane Wright. They have, uh, what's the other, Matty Beneers coming to play full-time yeah. now. And those man, are Michigan two man, forwards baby. that are way he was better. electric in college, goodness. I mean, the Kraken were projected to be way better than they were supposed to be, or they ended up being last year, and they just underperformed expectations in their first year in the league. I think they could be way higher than 27th. I think they could be better than the Ducks and the Sabres in this year, in this uh, year coming up. But, I mean, hey, we got done dirty by our, our colleagues, but it's a, it's okay. We got a whole season to prove them Hey, wrong. Jawan Howard said it best. I'll remember that. I'll remember that. But that was completely unplanned. I'll remember that. But, yeah, broadcast. Uh, you muted it, you said, because you were with family, and I, I wish I could have done the same because yeah, it was. And I'm mute. grateful that we can watch the preseason games to begin with, Scotty, because in the pe- years past, that's not always a given. But I just want the I want it to get to a point where it's, they're all televised in some fashion, because this playing the radio broadcast for Washington over top of the, the jumbotron feed from Washington and creating this dual audio where the arena music is playing on top of radio ads at the same time at the same volume level, it, it made me feel like I was hallucinating. It was, it was that's a strong word, probably not that bad, but. It was really annoying at the very least. And I again, this is where my, my boomer's coming out. I'm, I'm going to call the manager for the uh, NHL here. But <laughs> it, it's just, is it that hard to ask for just a video feed, a raw video feed, instead of the Jumbotron feed, and then overlay, the because the radio broadcast for the Wings was on there, overlay the Red Wings video feed on top of that? Because guess what? They did that all throughout the pandemic. I don't, like, do people remember that? Like the Red Wings had to broadcast from the LCA during away games using the raw video feed from the arena. Yeah. Like it's just a preseason game. I'm probably sounding like a, a baby right now, which is fine. But uh, the dual audio was really annoying. I will say this, though the Washington Capitals radio broadcast was leagues better than the Penguins. They were fun to listen to. They were good. It was just when the music well, was loud in the background, was they were good. Bad. I listened like the first two minutes of the game and then like for a minute during the third period. And I thought they were good. So. What I think I liked about them was they were fun. Like they were having fun with it. And mm-hmm. that was like, that's when the people you're listening to are having fun. Like that's fun to listen to. Absolutely. And I, I had fun listening to them. Just well, not good. the, not just not learn to fly because they literally played that as their goal song every single time. So I heard Learn to Fly three times, <laughs> just blaring through my speakers. And I was like, okay, I'm, I love the Foo Fighters. But I'm good enough. on that, yeah. Enough. Oh, all right, I got my complaining out. Any final thoughts? Bet online. Okay, I have one more thing to complain about. What? It was bet online. You saying that was going to be the complain thing. Complain about bet online. It was no, no. You saying it. Oh. I never complain about bet online as a service. That's true. Me neither. Anyways, <laughs> we'll be back for a new episode tomorrow. We same ball. time, same place. It's your team every, every day. day. Nice throw, dude. Thanks. I don't want to throw it too hard.